And um, a few of them came to us and were like, hey, we want to throw a rave, but we don't know how to. You have all the stuff to do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. Stop paying us. And so we ended up being like, you know what? We're, we're better than this now. We've been helping you guys for the past six months. Yeah. You guys owe us something, and we don't want to do this anymore. So we left beta. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, at that same time, the person who hired us to come on to BP Rec ended up getting in some some issues some like i don't even really know like the whole story of what happened he ended up having to leave uh to go help some family mm-hmm. and um he was pretty much like bp rack is yours <laughs> here you go <laughs> so me and emmy were just like looking at each other like oh fuck <laughs> like oh my god what do we do like we have no like yeah and this was thrown in the middle of it like that's i mean it's it's kind of crazy like it's almost like dope and scary at the same time of like that's exactly what it was. It was like, <laughs> never in my life have I been so excited yet so scared in one yeah, moment. Yeah. Yeah. One, because it was like, this guy is giving us his company and he trusts us with his company and mm. we can't let him down. Like we can't fail his company, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other end, it was like, whoa, now we have all of these resources and all of this gear and all of this stuff to throw like parties to throw yeah. cool <laughs> parties like underground raves yeah yeah oh my God. so that was that was really cool um it That's came cool. with it actually taught us a lot because never before had we had to book gigs had we had to budget for gigs had we had yeah. to um make writer contracts you know yeah. stuff like this actually and because of covid we had to come up with a covid agreement a covid contract yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. it's like to save our own asses you know and yeah 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 all of a sudden we had to start thinking about all of these other things that we had never, ever had to think about before ever. Oh God. And um, it was a huge learning curve. Like I can't, I can't even imagine. Cause even now I think about just trying to get either booked for a show or book, like hitting up some people to be like, Oh, do you want to try and put on a show together? Like that's a lot to manage, let alone the whole light production plus that. So like, are you yeah. in that instance, like say for, someone like who approach do you approach them or do they approach you and by them i mean is it like a booking agent or music people or like where does the like the interaction happen between a show and then the music basically so it's actually that's a really good question um so originally when we first started with bp rec he handed us over all of his contacts Mm -hmm. um he also had some gigs that he had still been but like had still had booked Mm -hmm. So we had to follow those through for him. Mm -hmm. Um, However, once we had done a show uh, of his that a lot of our friends came to, and a lot of our friends are in the music industry, the bass industry. Yeah. yeah. And um, a few of them came to us and were like, Hey, we want to throw a rave, but we don't know how to, you have all the stuff to do it. Yeah. (laughs) And so it was really just like finding people who were just as interested in making something happen as we were. Um, but filled the other places that we needed filled, filling the music, finding the venue, yeah. those types of things, you know? Um, and it's really just about, like I said, finding people who want to do it. it and after we had that first gig, it kind of just started coming to us. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We did um, an underground music session called Spooky Sessions for Halloween, mm. um, which came to us because Emmy and I had done lasers, just lasers at a black box event. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she was like, hey, I, I saw you guys were doing like lasers. It looked really good. You guys do other stuff. We want to put on this. Uh, we want to put on the show. Like, what are you guys capable of? Yeah, well, we were capable yeah. of everything. We could do lights, lasers and visuals. And yeah. so it was just like small networking. You oh know, God. someone knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who needs something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. God, that's where it's still kind of blowing me away that this was like last year that you kind of, I know (laughs) it's crazy. Um, And, you know, more than anything, I like when we took over this VP rec stuff, um, it was scary, but more than anything, I just wanted to have fun. And I wanted to make sure that we were doing it to the best of our abilities and not over committing ourselves to something that we weren't able to do. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's no fun. You get there and you stress, and it's just a shit show. And that's so, that's. Go yeah, ahead. on on that part with the, because obviously it's like if you had all the time in the world and money wasn't a thing, it's like this is great. You can be doing, putting up shows, hitting up people, all stuff. But on the financial side of this, like the underground rave scene, I also don't quite fully understand the financials of it still. But is yeah. it like are people coming to you, and then are you still getting paid to? put on these things and like how does yeah. i guess the financials of that work is it like prepay and then tickets come in or is it you have to wait for tickets and you get a percent of it or like how do you trust that process because that seems like a it's a scary, scary process scary <laughs> leap for everyone yeah like especially people wanting to take the jump for it and then i don't know i just it's such an unknown like i guess it's yeah, it's it's so scary um part of that actually i have to like credit Emmy to this. So like when we first started, when we first took over BP rec, we both agreed that we would handle different parts. She yeah. would handle the promotion, the financial, the booking, all yeah. of that stuff. I handle all of the production stuff. I handle lights, programming, laser programming, visual programming. We are, are two different entities in this group. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Which is because awesome. of, good to, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome because I am so bad at that stuff and she is not as good at what I do as I am. And so yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it works perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now to get back to what you were asking, we created kind of a concept of one trust, but also like contract liability. So what we do is we meet with the person and we have, like we go to the venue, we do a walkthrough and we see what they want. Like, what all do you want? Mm -hmm. um, and then we write up basically like, basically it's a, well, I can't think of what it's called right now. We basically just like write up a rough draft of everything that they want, what it's priced at, what it's going to cost to do the whole thing. They sign a contract saying that they will pay us half of it mm -hmm. on the day that they sign the contract. Yeah. And then half the other half on the day of show. Okay. So um, if they don't pay us the other half day of show, we don't show up. Yeah. But we have to have that by day of show. Yeah. Um, and that just protects us because even just like, even when I first started working for beta, Mm -hmm. which is why we ended up quitting. We would show up and we would work and they'd promise us money. And then we'd get to the end of the night and they're nowhere to be found. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden here we are six months later and they owe us $2,000 in production yeah. funds. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's held up by a contract that we created, um, which is extremely essential yeah. um, to this business because I I can't even tell you now that I've been in the industry a little bit over a year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit over a year. I can't even tell you how many times I've been gypped, how many times I've seen friends get gypped out of money, how many times yeah. I've seen people lowballed for events because yeah. they just don't want to pay you, but they want to throw a good show. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've I've actually had a a thing where I still have some money owed to me <laughs> on a on yeah. a certain instance where it's like just kind of word of mouth trust, and it's it's not like it's almost just like it's not even like it's been lost. It's just kind of waiting. Oh yeah, we'll, we gotta get that solved, and then it's just like. It never gets also when you don't yeah it's like without sort of a proper like either almost third party whether it be manager or contract or something to kind of yeah. do it otherwise it becomes almost like a personal thing and then it gets harder there too yeah and that's that's the worst like i don't want to hate you because you don't pay me yeah. but also pay me you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. i gave you something i threw you a sick show yeah, i deserve yeah. to be paid yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. um the funding usually comes from the people like mm. We just did a show actually at the Fox Theater in Boulder um, a few weeks ago for oh, yeah, a good yeah. friend of ours. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> he, yeah, that was so much fun. Um, we brought lasers and visuals, um, but he paid for that out of his own pocket. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's people, sometimes it's promoters who have funding for the event. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's all different. It just depends on the event itself and yeah. who wants you to come in. Mm -hmm. But Definitely, like the contract has saved our ass um, yeah. because it's it's legal obligation to say that you owe us money. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is huge, especially when we're spending a lot of time and effort into throwing you a good show. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's necessary. And at the end of the day, too, like everyone, I think everyone wants everyone to be happy too. It's just kind yeah. of that, that trust. Too.